What's up guys, I'm Brad with Shiny Tech Things. We take tech seriously. So in today's episode, I'm going to continue my review on the Nvidia Shield TV Pro for 2019. Now there's a lot of things that I really did like about it and a handful of things that I found out about it as well too. Real quick, before I go into detail on everything, go ahead and slap that like button real quick. Appreciate it, thanks. Again, full disclosure here, just wanted to let you know that I did purchase the NVIDIA Shield with my own money, and my opinions in this video are completely my own. So it turns out the AI upscaling actually will work in Plex, and it seems to be dependent upon the file input that it is receiving, although I have not found documentation as to yet the actual requirements are as of yet. So one of the problems that I was having is when I hooked up a Bluetooth gamepad is that whenever I sat on the couch, maybe like 15 feet or so away, it would disconnect or it would just lag really, really bad. And then after a little bit of uh, research online, because it is a USB 3 hard drive that I have connected to it, uh, which is a solid state drive, then there is the probability of USB 3 interference with Bluetooth. Now a simple fix was I just got some regular household aluminum foil like this here and then basically I just wrapped the cable and the hard drive in it and since it's a solid state I don't really have to worry much about heat and that actually fixed the problem. So now I can sit on the couch a good 15 plus feet away from the Nvidia Shield TV Pro and I can go ahead and play whatever game uh, without any issues. Now NVIDIA, if you're listening, one nice thing that you could do is actually go ahead and have a bright yellow sticker directly on the unit when you take it out of the box that says, hey, if you're going to be using a USB 3 hard drive, then if the components of it are not shielded, you will most likely experience issues with Bluetooth attached devices. That could have helped. One really cool thing about the new remote is that it has a built-in gyroscope to detect motion. So if it starts to get moved around, it'll actually light up. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video, but that's pretty cool. And then another great feature is that, say that you lose this, if you download the Shield TV app on your phone, you can use your phone to be able to find the remote. So I'll just come in here and go to Find My Remote, and press that and hit start. Can't tell you how handy that is, especially if you have a uh, darker couch where a black remote would just get lost in the couch easily. This is a really great feature. So Nvidia, thank you for putting something like this in. This is awesome. And Nvidia, please make this available to purchase separately. Now when comparing the Shield TV to other devices, another one that comes to mind is the Fire TV line. Now if you already have like a Fire TV or a Fire TV Stick 4K, then this is still a step up. However, there are a couple of things that were missing that I would have liked to see work straight out of the box. For example, one thing is that the AT&T TV Now, or what used to be called Direct TV Now, is not available on the App Store to be able to download and install on the NVIDIA Shield. Now, since AT&T recently jacked their rates another $10 a month, I'm just gonna cancel the service. It's just not worth the headache. Yes, I could sideload it, but it's just not worth it, in my opinion, to keep the service at that inflated price. It started at $35 a month, but I digress. Anyways, moving forward, with the three gigs of RAM, you're able to play pretty much any game you can think of on, on Android that is available, although the GeForce Now platform is still not available at this time two weeks later, and I still haven't received an email from NVIDIA either. NVIDIA, get off your butts and fix this. It has it on the box. Now to conclude, I think that NVIDIA probably released this a little too soon, especially with the GeForce Now gaming service still not available at launch. If it were me, I wouldn't have put that information on the box, but whatever. Here are some reasons that you would want to upgrade to the latest NVIDIA Shield. If you want the fastest, most powerful device that's out there, it's a great device. Now, if you're looking for something that is a bit more refined, there's a lot of other devices out there, but NVIDIA will hopefully get the GeForce Now platform out of beta or approve people in a timely fashion to be able to use the service. 
I don't mind paying extra for the service, just let me be able to play it. Don't advertise that you have all these games that you can play on a device when the device doesn't have access to play the games. If you're going to use this just for a streaming box, it's way overkill. And there are a lot of other options out there that cost a fraction of the price. For example, the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K. That, for the price, offers the best bang for the buck, in my opinion. Amazon, if you're watching and you want to get people that are just heavy streamers, copy this remote. Copy the functionality to be able to find it. Heck, make a remote that is glow in the dark. That would be freaking awesome. NVIDIA, you can do better. Can you use the NVIDIA Shield as a Plex server? Yes. Should you? That's kind of a complex answer to that question. Now, the reason why it's a complicated answer is because it depends on what format the media is in and what devices are going to be consuming that media. So for example, if you have a Roku TV and you have some file encoded in a particular format that the Roku TV needs it to be re-encoded to be able to play that data stream, then it is going to not be doing a direct play, which is fine, but once you have a couple of streams, the system is pretty much going to be maxed out. So if you plan on playing a lot of media, then you just need to be conscious so that it can be direct play pretty much all the time. And it's a great feature that you can just turn right on. Otherwise, I would suggest building a separate Plex server using a Intel based CPU so that you can use the quick sync feature to be able to re-encode video files on the fly and quick sync is extremely efficient so you don't need anything ultra high powered in most cases. NVIDIA, come on it's 2019 and you still give this thing 16 gigs of internal storage? Come on I can't even find a thumb drive around my home office that's that small. 32 gigs or greater should be the default and the reason why I'm a little bummed out about the size of the storage is because after you install a handful of applications, if you have external storage installed, it still does not completely move the data of the application over to the external drive. So this means if you download, say, Asphalt 8, it's going to consume some of the storage directly on the device as well as on the external hard drive if you have one installed or an external thumb drive. However, you multiply this times, say, half a dozen games and then the NVIDIA Shield will start telling you, hey, I'm low on storage and there's nothing you can do about it except for uninstall one of the other previous games. Overall, I'm pretty happy with my purchase and hope to see some updates coming from NVIDIA on this to go ahead and make things a more pleasant experience, especially with my kids wanting to play all the games. Thanks.